We're now in the home stretch. We just have to evaluate the curl of f and then this dot product and then evaluate this double integral. So let's work on the curl of f. So the curl of f is going to be equal to, and I just remember it as the determinant. So we have our i, j, k components. And it's really, you could imagine, it's the del operator crossed with the actual vector. So the del operator, I'll write this in a different color just for the to ease the monotony. So it's the partial with respect to x, partial with respect to y, partial with respect to z. And then our vector field, I copy and pasted it right over here. It is just equal to negative y squared is our i component, x is our j component, and z squared is our k component. And so this is going to be equal to, this is going to be equal to i, is going to be equal to i times the partial of z squared with respect to y. Well, there's the z squared is just a constant with respect to y, so the partial of z squared with respect to y is just going to be zero. It's just going to be zero minus the partial of x with respect to z. Well, once again, this is just a constant when you think in terms of z, so that's just going to be zero. So that's a nice simplification. And then we're going to have minus j. We need our little checkerboard pattern, so we put a negative in front of the j. Minus j. And so we'll have the partial of x, the partial of z squared with respect to x. Well, that's zero again, and then minus the partial of negative z, negative y squared with respect to z. Well, that's zero again, and then finally we have our k component, k. So plus plus k, and k we're going to have the partial of x with respect to x. Well, that actually gives us a value. That's just going to be one minus the partial of negative y squared with respect to y. So the partial of negative y squared with respect to y is negative 2y, and we're subtracting that. So it's going to be plus, plus 2y. So curl of f simplifies to just, oh, this is just 0 up here. It's just 1 plus 2y times k, or k times 1 plus 2y. And so if we go back to this right up here, if we go back up to that, we are going to get, we rewrite the integral so from 0 to 1. Then that's our r. Our r parameter is going to go from 0 to 1. Theta is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. And now curl of f has simplified to, and I won't skip any steps here, although it's tempting. It's 1 plus 2y. And actually, instead of writing 2y, let me write it in terms of the parameters. We saw it up here. y was r sine theta, if I remember correctly, right. R, y was r sine theta, so let me write y that way. 2 times r sine theta k, and we're going to dot this. We're going to take the dot product of that with this right over here, with r times j plus r times k d theta dr. And so when we take the dot product, this thing only has a k component. The, the j component is 0, so when you take the dot product with this j component, you're going to get 0. And neither of them you actually even have an i component. And so the inside is just going to simplify to this piece right over here is going to simplify to, we just have to think about the k components, because everything else is 0. So it's going to be r times this, and, that, and then we're done. So it's going to be r plus 2r squared sine theta d theta dr. d theta dr. And once again, theta goes from 0 to 2 pi, and r goes from 0 to 1. And now this is just a straight up double integral. We just have to evaluate this thing. And so first, we take the antiderivative with respect to theta. So the antiderivative with respect to theta is going to give us so this is going to be giving, so we're going to focus on theta first. So the antiderivative of r with respect to theta is just r theta. You can just view r as a constant. And then the antiderivative of this, antiderivative of sine of theta is negative cosine of theta. So this is going to be negative 2r squared cosine of theta. And we're going to evaluate it from 0 to 2 pi. And then we have the outside integral, which I will I'll recolor in yellow.
recolor in yellow. So we'll still have to integrate with respect to r, and r is going to go from 0 to 1. But inside, right over here, if we evaluate all of this business right over here at 2 pi, we get 2 pi r, 2 pi r, that's that right over there, minus cosine of 2 pi is just 1. So it's minus 2r squared. And then from that, we are going to subtract, from that, we're going to subtract this evaluated at 0. Well, r times 0 is just 0. And then cosine of 0 is 1. So it's just minus 2r squared, or negative 2r squared. Negative 2r squared. And at this negative and this negative, you get a positive. And then you have a negative 2r squared and then a plus 2r squared. It's just going to cancel out. That and that cancel out. And so this whole thing has simplified quite nicely to a simple definite integral, 0 to 1, of 2 pi 2 pi r dr. And the antiderivative of this is just going to be pi r squared. So we're just going to evaluate pi r squared from 0 to 1. When you evaluate it at 1, you get pi. When you evaluate it at 0, you just get 0. So you get pi minus 0, which is equal to, and now we deserve a drum roll because we've been doing a lot of work over many videos, this is equal to pi. So just to remind ourselves what we've done over the last few videos, we, we had this, this, this line integral that we were trying to figure out. And instead of directly evaluating the line integral, which we could do, and I encourage you to do so, and if I have time, I might do it in the next video. Instead of directly evaluating that line integral, we used Stokes' theorem to say, oh, we could actually instead say that that's the same thing as a surface integral over a piecewise smooth boundary, or over a piecewise smooth surface that this, that this path is the boundary of. And so we evaluated this surface integral, and eventually with a good bit of little bit of calculation, we got to evaluating it to be equal to pi.